if you have an inkling that your child might be trans, you have to report your own child. That is so sick. Which is just, I mean. What are we doing? Send here? your kids our way. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, all, and welcome to Marsha, 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 the podcast. I'm your host, Marsha Molinari, and you are here listening to the podcast that brings true and heartfelt human connection. I believe if you don't know about it, you can't care about it. And that's why we're here today. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Today we are doing a special recap of 2022 of LGBTQI plus stories coming out and things that have hit the news, mainly your Instagram feed. Today I want to welcome my special guest and co-anchor, August Getty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm so happy to have you. This is also your home as well as is mine. It's August, mm -hmm. August, August. Welcome back to August, August, August. Uh-huh. Um, well, let's go over a few things that's happened this year. I know a lot has happened with us. Sure. Uh, we moved into a new place. We did. Yeah, if people don't know, we live together. No. Um, it's been an incredible year. My first year of sobriety. That's right. A full our year. first year with our dog. Yep. It's been it's been one for the books. It's been one for the books. We've done a lot actually. We've uh, completed some Spartan races, which seem like years years, and years ago. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I think it's because of the move that we had. True. Yeah, it seemed like a lot went down, but you know, a lot did go down. And I mean, in the queer world as well, so yeah. much has happened, especially which yeah. is a world we're very much submersed in. Um, well, let's first get into uh, coming out stories. Great. Uh, obviously, every year people come out, whether that be trans, bisexual, non-binary, lesbian, and asexual. And the reason why we want to acknowledge, acknowledge and celebrate them is because we know that it's not easy for all to come to the awareness that they may be any and all the above. So to those who bravely did so unapologetically, we applaud you here on Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hey, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to well, the family. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's important to highlight coming out stories because it's like, you know, it's bigger than a birthday or bigger than anything you've had before because now you're entering a world in New Year's as your authentic self, you know, where you're coming to um, a new truth with yourself and, sure. and with your family and people around you and people you work with and your friends. And it's pretty special and it's not an easy thing to I do. I mean, for me to draw a parallel, I wouldn't have known what it's like for me to be an adult without being hindered by liquor or drugs. I genuinely didn't know who I was as a person because I wasn't myself yet. I'd never experienced it yet as right. an adult being, I mean, I'm already 28. That's eight years that I lost. But um, I'm now myself to my core and that's how coming out must feel no matter what, uh, age you are or yeah, where or you are aspect, in your yeah. life um you're ready to live as you which is incredible yeah and i think like you know mentioning that like i think that as a community uh the reason why drugs and alcohol might be prevalent in certain circles is because of the hardship it is that the struggle you go through with like presenting yourself each and every day in a society yeah. that says don't be that yeah, it's suppressing yeah. it completely. Yeah. And uh, so I want to start with Janelle Monet. Um, I was talking to you on the way here, uh, this interview I saw on Red Table Talk. And I really loved how she did it and how she explained. And I kind of understand the community that she was talking to, not just ours as the LGBTQI plus community, but uh, she was raised by pastors in, in the church. So her the way I think her intellect has, uh, you know, been able to handle it is her saying, I'm non-binary, so I just don't see myself as a woman solely. I feel all of my energy. The pansexual star said, I feel like God is much bigger than he or she. And if I am from God, I am everything. I am everything, but I am always and always stand with women. I will always stand with black women but I see everything that I am beyond the binary. I think that's just so beautiful, mm -hmm. honestly. And you know, I, I agree with that. Like, why does it always have to be one thing, you know, if we're all made from, as they say, one being, you know, we're all made in that 
that image. Um, and it is quite amazing because Janelle Monae has been part of our community um, for so long. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm so I'm artist. so happy that she's now having um, her moment. Yeah. Uh, with her her self expression, who she is. I mean, she brought Grace Jones to the to the red carpet of Glass Onion. Yeah. Which I just thought was a moment in, in gay history. Yeah. I mean, she definitely has as well a, as her coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that's important <laughs> that, too. Yeah. Um, no, we're so glad that she has, and you know, let's welcome her to the family. Congratulations, welcome, welcome, Janelle Monet. And I love also that uh, she says, My pronouns are free ass motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> they, them, she, her. Being queer black woman in America, someone who has been in a relationship with both men and women, I consider myself to be a free ass motherfucker. Good for you, yeah, yeah, free ass bitch. The next coming out story I want to celebrate this year is Rebel Wilson, who took to her Instagram uh, post with her girlfriend Ramona and said, I thought I was searching for a Disney prince, but maybe what I was really needed all this time was a Disney princess. Pound love is love. I think that's so beautiful. I love the way that all these are written differently, too, in their own um, in, their, in, in the way that they are able to understand it. Right. And because it, it really does hit different age groups, uh, different communities. It, um, it, it fills the space in between the holes. Right. It's, it's beautiful. Well, I love like, you know, for her, the way she wanted to explain herself on Instagram, in social media, and I believe it was because uh, another network had threatened to out her and she's like, I'm gonna take control of this. That's awful. That's awful, right? It's but, you know, she did in, in such a way where she didn't really explain too much, no. um, which wasn't needed. And I love just this caption because I know that uh, I know personally that her and Ramona love Disneyland. And so to be, be able to explain it in this way, I think is very, very sweet. Um, you know, maybe we're all looking for our own Disney prince or princesses or everyone in between. I'm looking for the dresses. Yeah, the, the Disney princess. princess dresses. <laughs> And our next coming out story is Bosco. The Drag Race season 14 contestant came out as trans in February. Bosco said, I can't really think of a better time to tell y'all, so here it goes. I'm straight too, she wrote, including two trend flag emojis. I'm now in a place where I'm surrounded by love and support. I'm not quite where I want to be yet, but I'm starting to see her peek through more and more. And I think something crazy on that season too, because Carrie's a very proud trans woman. Um, but I think she, we might have to fact check this, but I think she was, she went into Drag Race as the only out trans woman. And I think four or five trans women actually then. came out who were on the season with her. Right. Now including Bosco. Which I think is incredible. that just goes to show like when you see, when people are able to see someone like that uses their platform and see someone like yourself to come out, and mm -hmm. it gives you the strength to come out. And you might not even have recognized it walking into it, but then been surrounded by a supportive group and is like, I can do this. I mean, I know for myself, um, you know, being around you and Gigi, that completely launched me into my transitional uh, journey. Probably G faster. Gigi's very good at that. Yeah, and she saw something and she questioned me and she, not in a grilling kind of way, but like, I see this is what you're going towards. I just want to pull a little. Sure. You know? And it's even, I mean, I've lived my life in the sense that I've tried on every hat. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm wearing a mm -hmm. very chic chapeau. I guess. Uh, um, I've tried on every hat that I possibly could find um, just to see how one fits. Right. Sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're pink, sometimes they're blue. Uh -huh. Sometimes they're just cute. Yeah, uh, um, or like a trucker hat or uh, Whatever. I mean, the metaphor of a hat. Yeah, exactly. And then one day you go into your closet and you see all of these memories and all of the hats that you still wear in life and then some that you never wear again. Yeah. But you never really know your experience in life until, until you try on all the chapeaus. Yeah, exactly. And I love that about you. Like you do try things out and I think, you know, with this journey, it's, it's constant. It's never one thing. It's non-binary. Exactly. I mean, if 
Yes. In a sense. Yeah. Our next coming out story is Dylan Mulvaney. Woo, we love you, Dylan. Uh Uh-huh. Days of Girlhood. A 25-year-old actress and transgender rights activist, Dylan Mulvaney, rose to TikTok fame for her short-form video series, Days of Girlhood, in which she shared with the internet the ups and downs of her transgender transition through 2022. In 2022, she also interviewed current President Joe Biden, which was so major, you know, just to have a presence in the White House and for, especially since the last administration was just completely against anything LGBTQI+, Mm -hmm. to then have, um, you know, to then be invited. And, And it wasn't just her, it was just kind of like almost everyone we knew was invited to the White House, which is... I think very special and and it shows that uh, to be an American is to be everything, not just one thing. It's supposed to be the land of the free. Land of the free. And those are steps. I mean, we're we're long from that, but uh, Dylan being there is exactly what we need. She's a real, a real, a real change maker. In a recent interview, Dylan says, I think vulnerability is power. I just feel really honored to be somebody that can share my vulnerable parts and have them resonate with others. And it really does. I mean, there's certain moments where she gets on and um, even recently was, uh, you know, a kind of cry for not help, but more of community where she asks women to not feel threatened when she goes into a bathroom, which is something that I constantly am thinking about and considering You know, there's moments where I've waited in parking lots where I think the bathroom might be free or I I don't want to go in when there's a lot of people. And these are things that are constantly on my mind. And this particular day, I remember, you know, coming from work and waiting for people to come in and out and then sitting in my car and waiting. And I go on her Instagram and I see her talk about this and I was like, it's just kind of like you in the moment you feel like you're the only one going through it. But her sharing these moments, I'm like, wait, there's somebody else and, and yeah. everyone. Well, is well it's incredible, you know, when when there hasn't been representation for her, she exactly. created the space mm-hmm. to be the representation for others. And, you know, that's what, why I love our community so much, because there was no space for us. And then we pushed and shoved and created all of the space that we could. And now we take up so much space in this world. I mean, one in six Gen Z youths are LGBTQIA+. And we're just taking up as much space as possible. Yeah, we were talking that I think uh, the amount of adults that now identify as LGBTQI+, has now doubled in America, which is... Pretty major. I mean, that just goes to show that uh, visibility is working and people mm-hmm. are finding their space and finding their connection to come out. And, you know, because before you were just scared to say anything, even if no matter who you were and, and how gay your lifestyle may have been, if someone questioned you or interviewed you or said, are you this? You might have shied away from it, even though your lifestyle might have spoke differently. Uh, so welcome, Dylan. And we love you here on Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Uh, Well, another uh, coming out story that I wanted to mention was our friend, uh, Eureka. Eureka O'Hara. Yeah. One of the the co-stars of HBO's We're Here, which I've been binging all night the past three nights. I've been sobbing. I've been cheering. One of our good friends won um, an Emmy for costume design. Um, Back to Eureka, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I love the show. I love the show so much. It's such an incredible show. You were watching it last night. And, you know, not every story is a triumphant story. Sometimes there is a lot of pushback still. And the finale um, is today. And Eureka, she came out. She's a sober sister of mine as well. Yeah. And she, she just came out as a trans woman. And she... I think she lived as a trans woman from 18 to 23. And then because of the pushback, she... Um, she didn't fill a space she for her. She retransitioned yeah. and as a gender non-conforming person. And now she's finally 
herself now, and I'm I'm so happy for her. Yeah, it's so amazing, and I'm I'm very happy for her, and I'm looking forward to uh, watching her journey, and I know it's going to be a beautiful one, and one that she'll share on the show. We have to take her out to lunch because I, I really want to listen to all the all the tea about the show. Behind the I, I want to know which contestants were real vafanculos. Yeah. <laughs> and real, <laughs> real, you know, son yeah. of a gun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I'm sure it's not always easy, especially coming to these small towns as they do, um, not being welcomed and, and, you know, maybe getting someone that they're mentoring that is not in the space yet. Mm-mm. You know, that may have started off with the application or the interview being like, I'm ready. But, you know, when it's time to come and the cameras are on and you're ready to go, it's not easy because then you're realizing like you're going to be sharing this with the rest of the world. And it's true. I, so, sometimes when it's time to come, it's not easy. Exactly. And I commend each and every one of those stories. It's very beautiful. So I was making a, a joke. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Um, well, let's talk a little bit, you know, I've, I've mentioned before my coming out story and, um, just to go on the basis of like how it's not always easy for everyone. I know for you, you, you basically said there was no real coming out. I was, I was very privileged. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to say it. I'm very privileged, very blessed, um, with my family where I didn't really need to come out, um, they really, my mom really created the space for me. A lot of, there was a little pushback, but it was just more for me as a, as a personality. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a monster because of it. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to. Pushed over. I, I, I wanted to knock shit over. Right. In every sense of the way. Um, and really create space. And that's terrifying. Right. For a mother to hear about their child who is probably going to have a lot of problems. Most of my issues came in school, but um, my family, my coming out story is it's pretty, can you pass the salt? Yeah, <laughs> more welcoming yeah. and, and you know, and, and it's not always that, but you know, but your mom now even to this day creates those spaces for so many in our community, mm-hmm. you know, including myself and always make me feel like I'm definitely on the right path, and there's people here to support you along the way. We were born this way. Born this way, definitely. And so, well, my coming out wasn't as easy, and, and I had to do it twice, thrice, maybe. Um, and the first time when I came out to my mom as being gay, she didn't take it as well, and she immediately started sobbing. And um, I think there was a concern that... I think her main concern was me getting hurt, I think, which is where parents go mostly. Yeah. And then it turns into a kind of like, she was raised super religious, and so that didn't coincide with her religion. Um, but, you know, I think through sticking around and her seeing a heart behind what all the things that she had built up to what a gay person at the time would be, I was speaking against it. She was like, there's no way someone with so much love could be bad. And I think those walls slowly started breaking down to that when it came time to me, came time for me to tell her that I had transitioned to a woman and my name is Marsha. It was like night and day. She was like, I love Marsha. That's great. I thought something was going on. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. That's so wonderful. You know, and I was a little taken aback by it. And I was like, oh, wow. You're like, what, when is the ball going to drop? Yeah. What, when? Wait, where is she going to yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the lakes of fire are coming. <laughs> um, but that didn't happen. And I, and I really, that's a testament to, I think, giving people that chance and space to grow. Because I think people can change. And um, Of course. I mean, even when somebody says, well, you know, th- this is how I was raised. Even when, you know, when people have a lot of pushback with pronouns and then they're like, I wasn't raised with these many pronouns. I'm yeah. like, do you know what we were all raised doing that we don't do anymore? Like right. we, we used to Summit. walk around in diapers, right. eating with our hands, eating, licking the floor. Yeah, we grow like, out of that. People grow up yeah. and make their own decisions in this world. Well, one of the kind of best things I, I heard during a TED talk when people were like, I can't change, like I can't no longer call them he to she or, 
you know, the pronoun change is like really messing with me. And um, one of the stories was like, well, you know, when a grandkid comes into this world, you start calling like the grandmother, like Nona or Gigi or anything like that. But the whole family has no problem changing that. Change from mom to grandma. Right. Yeah. And they're just like, that's who she is or that's who she wants to be. She doesn't want to be called grandma. She wants to be called Nona. She wants to be called Gigi. You know, she doesn't want to be called. She wants to be called. Call me Susan. You know, and you know, for her to get that choice and then the family can easily go with it. It's just that easy, you know, make people feel comfortable. If that's who they want to be, let them be that, you know, that's all I'm saying about If that. grandma gets to lie about her age. <laughs> exactly. I get to be truthful about my name. Okay. LGBTQI plus political news. I'm realizing more and more that embracing other people's feelings and viewpoints is the hardest part. We've grappled with a lot this year and as a country, especially in politics. This year, there was a trans bill in place excluding trans youth from athletic sports. And I I remember we talked about this. You know, this goes along with Macy Gray saying with she said about trans women never being real women and oh you know so these kind dreadful. of things like we have enough that we're battling against daily they, and like we don't need your opinion exactly like, like w- there is enough going on without ins- your small bigoted view exactly. of the world well this also comes to is the don't say gay in florida where ron DeSantis uh has a bill that has banned LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus youth uh, from pre-K to third grade from mentioning family members that are queer or she, having yeah. any kind of lifestyle. I mean, a lot a lot went, went around with it. Um, I think it was like 200 LGBTQ um, books were taken off the shelves in libraries and schools. Um, I just watched a We're Here episode and it was... It was all about this. There. Well, I just don't see it, how... It rocked me. It should rock say. everyone because when you start banning free thought, literature, and, you know, important pieces of history, which is, we are part of this history. Yes. We've always been here, and to try to erase it is a control thing, and it's not just going to come for our community. It's going to come... All the way down the line, you know, and that and that's also going with, you know, uh, abortion rights. When that started, I was like, we need to pay attention to this, you know, as a community, because this is going to start coming trickling down to our rights. And that's what it is. Completely. It's, it's all about control. And um, I just think that we need to start paying attention because I think more bills ever uh, were pushed in 2022 that were anti LGBTQI plus, you know, just uh, in Texas, uh, there the governor there has given a right to uh, tell to you know if you if you see someone raising their kid as a transgender child to report them to child services or if you have an inkling that your child might be trans you have to report your own child. That is so sick. Which is just I mean. <laughs> Like, what are we doing? Send your kids our way. Yeah, definitely. We'll take them in. Honestly, our community will. Yeah. I swear there's happy news. There's got to be happy news. There's got to be happy news. There is, there is, there is. is. Brittany Grinder. Did anybody have a good day? Yeah, I had a wonderful day. We woke up today. Um, Brittany Griner was released from Russia. Good news. Yes, good news. Uh, She was taken into custody for having um, a vape cartridge containing hashish oil. At the airport, which is just in Russia, in Russia, yes. And it, I don't. Th- I think she was just made an example of. It. I mean, obviously, she wasn't going to hurt anyone with it. I think that um, it was a leveraging tool for them, and and I'm so th- thankful that she was able to get out and welcome out. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Thank goodness you are out. I remember when the Olympics were happening in in Russia. Correct. Yeah. And. Everybody was, you know, having the pushback and saying, you know, how could we possibly be sending money to a country that negates who we are as, as people? Right. And it goes the same with Qatar in the yeah. World Cup. Um, why is why why is so much being sent there well, for and there's people so that many don't other want locations. anybody to do? They don't want anything yeah. to do with us. We don't have to go there. No. no. Yeah. 
And it's just like, especially like, what does this show to like your team players and, you know, everyone, coaches, people involved, like uh, you're not welcomed and you have to hide yourself when you go to this country. It's, it's not like, even selflessness yeah. for, you know, for other people to stand up for each other. It's just common sense. Well, I want to read this quote from Brittany's wife uh, to People's Magazine. And She's it says, true. I was hopeless a lot of days. You try and stay grounded, but I am still human. I would never completely give up hope on my wife's life. You know, and that's just... That's a scary thought. It's a scary thought when you think Do you like, even know that that's an option? Right. I mean, you know, this kind of, in a sense, almost happened to Gigi. In, in Dubai. Yeah. She could have very much got, you know, taken to prison, which they threatened multiple and times. I'm seeing so many people, like, now that are traveling to Dubai who are gay. And I'm like, you're not being an ally. Yeah. You're not being an ally, truthfully. Oh, I have people write, write me all the time. They're like, you should come to Dubai. I'm like, I don't think I'm welcome there. No, 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 it's totally fine. I'm like, but myself, like the way I'm dressed today, you think I'm okay to go there? Like I'm like, like I'm not, I won't be okay there. No. No. I mean, I had an experience there once where I opened my hotel door. I went there on a trip with a friend and I was scared the whole time, like legit scared. And I would always keep myself covered, which is like, why do you want to be there anyways? And this one time I opened the door and my purple hair shined through and I saw the guy look at my hair and, and you wouldn't think anyone would notice someone with purple hair or that being anything to worry about. Seven, seven knocks later on my door, they just kept coming, coming. And luckily I had a friend that told me if I ever got in trouble there to write him and I wrote him and all I wrote was, they know. And he already knew, he's like, what hotel are you staying at? And he called wow. them and he was like, they won't be bothering you. But not everyone's going to have a friend no. that's going to be able to get them out of a situation like that. Like, no. what would that have turned into? You know, it's, it's very scary out there. But we're glad you're home, Brittany, and... Very, very happy. Very happy. And entertainment news. <gasps> the movie Bros hit cinemas. Uh, I watched a little bit of this. Okay, okay. If we, we can get it. into it. Let's get into it. It doesn't take much for me to cry. I'm a cancer. I, I'm a crier. Right. So I did cry at the end of the movie. That's not to say I enjoyed it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's not to say I enjoyed it. I do think that there needs to be, um, of course, space for queer movies right. to be mainstream and queer stories. I thought that... They did a good job of showing what parts of the community can be, like a circuit party or, right. you, you know, somebody who's angsty and negative. Um, but it was like a little satire or like... It just, it was not for me. But is it like showing a part of our community that's more cartoonish? It, it was almost as if a straight woman wrote it. Right. And what thinking their ideas. she's very funny right. um, about like her two gay best friends. Right. That's what I got from it. That's what I got from I mean, I only watched a little bit when I walked in on you watching it. And I don't know, I couldn't connect to it. But, you know, that doesn't, I can't connect to like a lot of different movies that some people may consider good or bad or this or that. But um, I'm like a Dr. Seuss <laughs> reviewer. I loved the poster for it. There, yeah. there was a big poster on Sunset of a man's butt in blue jeans. And they were standing next to each other. Which is a huge thing. I mean, I know before I came out, when I first moved to L.A. and saw two men holding hands, I almost crashed my car. I couldn't believe it. So for that to be now a poster board. Oh, it, it was incredible. Incredible. Like I was driving down the street and I was like, oh, that is... That's a good one. Right. So I think like the consens consensus being is that, you know, when these movies are a hit, that more movies like it will be made. And so hopefully we'll have different storylines that... I think also the space in which it was written was two white cis men. And that's just, at, you know, at the front of 
so many headlines already in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that I needed to see right. again and again. Right. Or something that I cared about. In other entertainment news, I'd like to give a shout out to Michaela J. Rodriguez, known as MJ. Uh, she's a friend of ours. And she won a Golden Globe for her part in Pose. I don't think she goes by MJ anymore. No, she doesn't? No. Oh, okay, I apologize. Um, it's all about learning and growing and learning. Uh, Michaela J. Rodriguez. Yes. We saw her recently at our friend's birthday. And we saw her at the GLAAD Awards. And she yes. She got an award uh, yes, yes, yes. through Andrew Garfield. And I, I ran into her in Paris, actually, and... Uh, she was just so lovely, and she came up to me and said, "And you know, I'm watching your journey, and I'm seeing oh. everything that you're doing, and you're so beautiful, and you're killing it. And, you know, it's, it means a lot, especially from someone that's doing so much in our Didn't community. she have a scare in Paris? She did. I think it was that same day, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was that same day. Um, well, I was saying, you know... The, that I don't feel, I hadn't felt safe this last trip in Paris. Um, I had five Uber drivers drive away from me once they saw and they looked at me. And I immediately felt this like sense of danger walking around. So I would only go to like events that I was doing or events that I knew I can get in and out of, like that my friends were secure in. I wouldn't just walk down the street like I normally would, which I've, you know, I lived in Paris for three years and I never felt this like sort of sense of danger. And um, yes, during lunch, she came up to me and she mentioned that she was sure. attacked. Yeah. In uh, Place Vendome, which is like a really nice part where the Ritz Carlton is. And I mean, we have stomped through this. Yeah, uh, this area, this neighborhood, and so many times, so many times, and all different sorts of regalia. Yeah, dressed to the nines or this or that, and yeah, she was physically attacked, and her and her boyfriend had to fist fight their way out, and and she was like, "Girl, we find in the streets. You need to be careful." And I, immediately, I was like, "What?" And when I stepped outside of the restaurant, I felt like a lot of eyes on me, but not in the regular way of like she's doing something cute or cool it was more well, you do become quite blind to it especially during like new york fashion yeah. week yeah everybody's already looking because my friend didn't understand until i pointed it out right and then he started to recognize it's it. a different crowd that starts to look right and i was like we should go back to the hotel so you know um as we are growing each year i think that or there's a a lot of places that we need to be more visible in you know we need to it's important that we share these stories with our community and uplift those who are coming out and you know we got to celebrate each other because we do and also to let people know that there are spaces that um it, it can exist for spaces to um treat us like the people that we are you know hwood does an incredible job yeah, at thank you. treating everybody with equal kindness that is matched yeah i mean yes you know my uh company i often say like the the people that i have surrounded surrounded me is like lining in a bottle like you really i do understand uh, what a privilege it is to be able to work in a place where you know you're supported and i know that's not that people don't get that every day they may dress like this or dress however they want to dress and be whoever they want to be in their daily lives but when they go to work they have to like put on that uniform and take off their nails and do their hair a certain way and talk a certain way and you know that's hard and and i i recognize that privilege that i have and i'm and I, I want that for everyone, and every company should have that. I agree. That's so unfair. I don't get any reading cards. Marsha has all the reading cards. So stingy on this show. Well, speaking of good news, you want some cards? We got them. <laughs> speaking of sure, good give, news. Sure, give me props. Thank you. Oh, no, I can hear my accent coming in and uh -huh. out. Someone's getting tired. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have one more cherry topper to end this year uh, with a good feeling. And that's the Senate passed the rights to respect the Marriage Act. In a shocking move for those of us who had lived through multiple attempts to ban marriage equality, 
The U.S. Senate passed a bipartisan bill to protect marriage and for same-sex couples for any encroachment by the Supreme Court or far-right politicians. Maybe it really does get better. Oh, I'm yeah. start crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that is, you know, that's something that definitely needed to happen. It was a long time coming. Can you explain what passing the 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 Respect for Marriage Act, what the difference is between, I think that we should talk about that, the difference of what it was versus what it is now. Right. I think before, I think, uh, I think, through each state, they had their own, they can like choose or not choose. I think this kind of makes it uh, federally. Yeah. Oh, okay, like, incredible. Yeah, that you can't come for it, like that the Supreme Court can't come for it and it's just done. I mean, I knew that. I right, just, right, 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 right. You know, and that's, I mean, but you're right to ask because. Because there's so many different ways that it's been said right. in the past too. Because we always think it's final. Sure. Just because it's over doesn't mean it's really over. Just because it's, it's over. Exactly. 2023. 2023. <laughs> and that's it for this year's news wrap up. Oh my goddess, August. That was a lot of news and a lot of things happened in 2022. And <laughs> do you have anything that you want to say about this past year and, and kind of like what you hope to get from the next year. Any challenges that actually you might have overcome this last year? Sobriety, letting go of a lot. Yeah. It's been, it's been, uh, been shedding a lot. Um, and being okay with it. And that. being more than okay with it. And you know, this next year, standing up for myself, saying no to things that I don't want to do, saying no to things that I don't believe in, knowing that the person I'm taking home every night is myself, who I love. Boom. He's a great man. Um, and if there's anybody watching... He's got a lot to offer. queer, you know. Incredibly funny, great singer, <laughs> no, long walks on the beach. No. No, I was going <laughs> to okay. just send, a send him... App. No, just a cute message of, you know... Fight on, little pony. Yeah. Fight on. Little unicorn. If there's any little Augusts out there listening on this cold night. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> Stay beautiful. Well, I think for me, this year has just been like a constant learning curve. I think through Marsha, 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 I've learned so much about each guest. Um, you know, and I'm constantly growing from everyone's stories. And, and I hope that in this next year that we get to hear more unique stories that we and I connect to and continue to grow from. Because as we say, if you don't know about it, it's hard to care about it. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you for listening to Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and share so that we can continue sharing with you. This podcast is brought to you by Vocal Podcast Network. Executive producers are Michaela Simon and Marsha Molinari. Produced by Yonta Tower, Morgan McDonald, and Ariana Giles. Shooting and editing by Morgan McDonald. Music by Aaron Reese. Artwork by Dominic Demetz and hosted by Marsha Molinari. Remember to follow at Marsha Molinari and at Vocal Podcasts everywhere. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast.